Good morning, everyone. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mallory Halterman, and I'm serving you as your vestry person of the day. I'd like to extend a welcome to all of you, but especially visitors and those watching at home. We're glad to have you. Um, a few announcements before we get started. Um, today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and it's lessons and carols, so you're in for a real treat. Um, I wanted to remind her our Christmas pageant rehearsal will be today after church. Um, so we'll eat just a quick lunch and then we'll get started. It should last for maybe about an hour. And then we will have another rehearsal um, around 4.30 on Christmas Eve, so right before our, our Christmas Eve service. Um, and speaking about Christmas Eve, we'll have two services, one at 5.30, that's the family service where we'll have the Christmas pageant. And then we'll hold a candlelight service with the Holy Eucharist at 10 p.m. And then last but not least, um, we're going to have a combined dinner church on January 11th at 6.30 p.m. So we're joining with the Grovetown Episcopal Lutheran Mission. Um, so that should be a good time. But at this time, if you would silence your cell phones and open your hearts, we'll get ready for worship.
Lord be with you. And, and welcome to everybody for our lessons of uh, readings and uh, lessons and carols. And it's good to have everybody here. If you're here for the first time, I say welcome. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Beloved in Christ, in the season of Advent, let it be our care and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels, and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem to see the babe lying in a manger. Let us read in Mark and Holy Scripture the tale of the love and purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience until the glorious redemption brought us by his holy child. And let us look forward to the yearly remembrance of his birth <clears throat> with hymns and songs of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for the mission and unity of the church for which he died, and especially in our country, in our community. And because of all these things would rejoice his heart, let us at this time remember his name in his name, the poor and helpless, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and little children, and all those who know not the Lord Jesus or love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. For those in need of healing, Chastity Foster, <coughs> McLean Scalick, Teresa Williams, Carol Simonson, Beverly H. Patterson, Skip, Blanca Perez, and Dawn Morgan. For those celebrating birthdays, Savannah Arnold, and for the departed, Margie Law and Elizabeth Goodwin. Lastly, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother and all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, the multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we are evermore, we are forevermore our one. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, Cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and thus you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pangs in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children, yet your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. And to the man he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. 
Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made garments of skins for the man and for his wife and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, comfort my people, says the God, your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. The voice of one calling in the wilderness, 
Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because of the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall but the word of God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on the high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice and with a shout, lift it up and do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But 
This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. 
Yet my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull, and stop their ears, and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. 
They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong and do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped and the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall, re shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Baruch. Look toward the east, O Jerusalem, and see the joy that is coming to you from God. Look, your children are coming, whom you sent away. They are coming, gathered from east and west, at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting, for God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you evermore the name, righteous peace, godly glory. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height. Look toward the east and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One. 
rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies, but God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low and the valleys filled up to make level ground so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have, a, have shaded Israel at God's command. For God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Zephaniah. Sing loud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. The word of the Lord.
Please stand for the reading of the gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel of St. Luke. Glory. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And then the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now sharing the peace of Christ with our brothers and sisters online, a good number of, home, uh, and a good number of who are home with COVID today, um, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
seated. So there's no sermon today. Yay! <laughs> but um, I wanted to share something to um, maybe reframe, something to think about. When you read the Christmas stories um, in Luke and Matthew, Mark doesn't have a Christmas story and John doesn't have one. We tend to blend them. But something to keep in mind is um, you have Joseph. Um, you hear a lot of, I don't want to offend anybody, but you hear talking more evangelical circles about biblical manhood. What if we thought about a biblical man in terms of Joseph, who could have sent Mary away, um, and she would have been subject to persecution and death, but instead he chose to stay with her and bear all that and humble himself. And we tend to think of Mary as humble, but here you have this 14-year-old Jewish farm girl raised in a society and culture in which she was to be seen and not heard. And yet all of a sudden, here she is being heard. She says, here I am, the servant of the Lord. That was so radical for both of them, their actions in that culture um, to give birth, to give life to God in human form, to, God, um, to God's love with skin on. It's just something to think about, maybe a, a different approach as you, you read those stories. It took grit and perseverance for Mary to do that. So she's not as humble and meek as we maybe make her out to be. End of sermon. <coughs> All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Please stand. I was trying to give you a break, but they wanted you to stand. <laughs> it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame and power and great triumph, we may without shame and or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love with which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people and your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice and praise, thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him and <clears throat> be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
in the fullness of time put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that he heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, in him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has told, taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is the Lord's will that those who desire Jesus should meet him here at this table. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Please be seated. You are all welcome and invited at our Lord's table. You come down the center aisle, you receive the bread. If you go to the right, you can receive by common cup. If you go to the left, you can dip the bread into the wine and receive by intention. Um, or if you're not comfortable, you can just uh, receive the bread or receive a blessing. Also, there are folks in the rear. If you desire prayer after communion, they are there to pray with you. The table is prepared. Come and receive Jesus.
a couple quick things before we share the post-communion prayer. It's good to have everybody here today, and I say welcome. Um, Christmas Eve services next Saturday will be at 5.30. That'll be the uh, Christmas worship with the, the children's pageant. And then at 10 o'clock, we'll have the candlelight service. Um, no service Sunday, Christmas Day. So 5.30 and 10 o'clock, uh, Christmas Eve. Immediately after worship, the children will rehearse for the pageant. Downstairs from noon to five, we have a sensory Santa um, ministry taking place. So we'll have Santa uh, with children on different levels of the spectrum. Um, so if you go downstairs, I just encourage you to, to be aware of that and be sensitive to that. Um, also, as happens, we'll have people here at Christmas Eve who you may not have seen. Here's what to say to people when you haven't seen them in a while. Nice to see you, right? That's it. Nothing starky, nothing snarky, nothing sarcastic. I see so much damage done at Christmas and Easter and Mother's Day. Um, but just, if you see somebody you haven't seen in a while, nice to see you. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. I'm keeping tabs of who's naughty and nice on that one. <laughs> Let's share together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Awesome.